Good morning. Let's watch this locksmith and service. Business is a beautiful thing, but it will make your head spin. People, I come across the, the most wonderful people you can meet, and then sometimes people can be so difficult to work with. And and I, and I get it. Like a, a large part of dealing with customers, right, is educating them on what's available, uh, what makes sense and what doesn't, and then trying to fill those needs, trying to make sure that you are fulfilling their needs that they have or desires that they want uh, in terms of hardware and what they want things to do. So I get a call and this person, now I've been going back and forth with this person. I actually did a video on it about bidding the project. Now I bid at this project and the project, um, the amount came up to around $2,000. Now this was for a, there was a lot of hardware on the door. There was a lot of hardware on multiple doors and then there was an issue with one of the doors that needed repair so i had to i know so i put into the bid hey look this is what it's going to cost to fix that okay because it defeats the purpose of me putting some high grade lock cylinder on your door if your door doesn't work okay so it's my job as a security per, uh, personnel to let you know these are the issues with your door and your security and so putting the door, this, this lock on there, expensive lock, it's, it negates the, I mean, like, seriously, like, like, what's the purpose? So anyway, moving forward, this person calls me and we, we finally, I thought we got somewhere on what we wanted to do, right? So I finally send him over and I say, hey, look, this is the quote. He told me the budget in which he wanted to stay in. And I told him, okay, for this budget, being realistic with you, you cannot get these items for this price for grade one items. It's not gonna happen within that price point as well as pay me. So I end up paying for your equipment in addition to doing the labor for free. Now, I like them and I like all my customers. I enjoy them, but I'm not gonna pay for your equipment, okay? Now I'll pay for it in advance, absolutely. And I'll, and I'll bring it and I'll install it, but I'm not gonna pay for it. I'm not gonna just be gifting everybody products. Not gonna happen. Or I might as well not be in business and uh, we can just uh, be a blessing to people and go around and say, hey, look, you need a new knob and I'll replace that. And sometimes I might do that and that's fine. Uh, but as a, as a startup business, a new business, uh, well, we're not really new, but you know, um, the, the relaunch, we, uh, I can't do that, right? So it now, so he's giving me the budget and I tell him, okay, look, this is what I can do with this. And so I gave him that and he was okay with it. Okay, great. But he's one of these people where sometimes you deal with customers where they want these things. They want things, but then their budget is set. And the things that they want is out of their budget. Kind of like sometimes, you know, I've lived in the past and we, we kind of tend to live above our means type of thing. All right, so you have to know what you can afford and what you can't afford. And so sometimes you may not be able to purchase the Maserati for right now, you might just have to take the Hyundai. And that's okay. Because Hyundai makes some nice vehicles. All right? So it's okay to get the Hyundai. And it especially, right? And you, so it's equivalent sometimes when people ask me to do things like that, put um, expensive hardware on uh, the deteriorating doors, it's equivalent to putting the rims on the old cutlasses we used to see back in the day. Like, why did you put those big old rims, expensive rims, on that cheap car? So... If the car is cheap, it doesn't make a difference what kind of rims you have. Yes, it may look good aesthetically, but functionally, it is, it's a piece of crap. So, same way with the door. If your door is not functioning properly, it does not make sense at all to put expensive hardware on it. Just so you can say, look at what I got. It doesn't make a difference. So, what will happen is the door, if it's binding and bold and, and warped, and you're putting uh, undue pressure on the lock and the latch and the latch spring latch assembly and, and before you know it you got a damaged lock or you got other issues that you know you didn't foresee well i do and uh it's my job to point those things out to you not because i want to sell you uh upgrade you or whatever i'm going to tell you what needs to be done and if there's no issues with the door i would never say there's an issue with your door and there's not 
but what I don't want to do is put expensive hardware. Now, ultimately, you're in control. You're paying me for my services, and if you say, hey, look, I want this $3,000 lock on this door, I'm going to put it on your door. But I'm also going to tell you the problem with the door, right? You know, hey, look, down the line, you might want to think about replacing this door, you know, or repairing this door, and this is what it would cost to repair the door. And just so you know, and then you say, okay, that's fine. Thank you. Okay, cool. Well, then I'll go ahead and I'll throw you a lock on your door. So this person calls me and they say, I'm sorry, I jump around because <laughs> I got to work on that. Um, I, I'm thinking at a, at a hundred miles an hour. So the person, he has the budget, he set out, he wants me to install it. And then he calls back and he says, oh, well, after speaking with my wife, um, we want an electronic lock and something that we can use a buzzer to uh, allow access or deny access from behind a counter. So now you're talking about something completely different, okay? So you want the buzzing sound as well. So the buzzing sound, like you see in prison, the, the, the sound of, or, or uh, an apartment complex, the sound of the door, bzzz, that's AC, alt, uh, you know, alternating current. Um, and so that requires an electric strike, some sort of push pad, and the wire run to your location, whatever location that is, and also wiring up a switch or button, okay? A dumb button, it doesn't do anything, but open and close the circuit. So you want me to run that, and that's fine, I can do that for you. Okay, but now that's more expensive than what you said you wanted, with the, just the basic hardware. So you wanted the standalone, just wanted basic locks and deadbolts. Okay, so that's fine, I can give you that, and I can give it to you at the cost that you wanted to stay within. Now you're talking about something that's gonna require you to go above that. So how can I do that within this price? So I told him, he said, well, I want something that will be on the door and then I can have remotes and from different, and I can buzz it. Okay. Again, you're talking about, uh, and then from home and he cloud-based and networking. I mean, you're getting into stuff that it's not cheap. I mean, the labor, so whatever, hypothetically, if a person charges $75 an hour and you want me to run wires, even if it's under a hundred feet, and I'm running multiple wires, a strike, you're talking about 18-2 wire, other, uh, a keypad, you may run 22-6. And I'm running these wires to some location, some panel, and then you got a power supply. Okay, that's going to take time. Okay, now we're talking about one door, so we're not talking about all day. Well, maybe. It depends on how far the stretch is. But say, it's like I said, 100 feet, you know, it gets costly is the point. And so you've already exceeded your budget. So with the strike and the keypad alone, unless you got something extremely cheap. So then you said you were focused on security. So you can't be focused on security if you're thinking about the cheapest product that's out there. So even getting the cheapest, so getting the cheapest products, okay, so you can go to Amazon and buy something off of there and you can spend less than $100 probably on a keypad and a mag lock and uh, a strike and a, a PIR system, infrared system, and all that kind of stuff. You can get it for probably $100 or something. Well, how long is it gonna last? And if you do that, I'll hook it up for you. I will, I promise. But I'm not gonna warranty it. I said, I'm not gonna warranty it, okay? So I just wanna point that out. So, you know, and that makes sense. You should, you should not expect me to warranty something that, you know, I did not purchase. I don't know where you got it from. And, you know, Unless there's something wrong with the wiring, uh, uh, then obviously, you know, it's something that I did that I'm going to warranty. But your products, if your products just shut down and they stop working, okay, then that's not my fault. I'm not going to pay for that. I'm not going to repair that, okay? So if I get it from my suppliers, and I have a number of them, so I'm not just limited to one. And so if I do that, then I know they warranty those products. So I can warranty the work. So when I say to them, hey, look, this PIR system just died. You know, I tested it, I put a, a, a meter on it, and it's not reading anything or whatever. It's not giving me It's not giving me anything. Okay, well, send it back, and they'll send another one. No problem. Or they'll send it for me, I'll get it, and then send the other one back. And it's super easy, and I can take care of my customers that way. So, for the record, uh, if, if you ever need my services for any electronic work, or you want a system, trust 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 and this comes from building a relationship with people trust that i am going to tell you um if there's any issues with a door or hardware or there's some you know something that is impossible for me to do and i'm going to tell you honestly and if it's something and i'm going to tell you that and then if you still want me to 
you know, to put on whatever hardware, I'm going to do it. Um, but knowing that, hey, look, if you got the product from somewhere, I can't warranty those products and that should be understandable, I hope. And um, and we'll do the best we can to make that work, whatever you, you purchase. But if you have a budget and you tell me what the budget is and I'm going to tell you what you can get um, within that price range. And I'm going to try to give you if uh, a low, medium, and high range. So you have options. But I'm going to tell you why you should never go with just a simply a just a low grade you know um saying you know so anyway but we would have that conversation during our initial assessment so you know so that's all i wanted to say so i'm actually en route to a a business right now and they called me back this is my I, actually i was called there for a service and then while i was there he asked me to do another job the owner so i was happy to do it and so now I'm going back out because they uh, possibly have more work that they want me to do. So uh, that's what I'm in route to do right now. And then I'll, I have a job at a CVS where I'll be drilling out an IC core to remove the cylinder because the control key doesn't work, which is what takes that figure eight shape out of the lock, takes the core out, and their control key doesn't work. So I'm drilling that out so they can put another core in. And uh, it's a pretty light day. It's a pretty light day. Uh, and then I'll tell you about how when God has a plan for your life, how people uh, or the enemy is constantly working against you, right? But God has already instilled in me what I need. And, and so in terms of being driven, a driven individual. So I won't allow anybody to, to hamper that. And, uh, and, and I know God won't allow it either. So, uh, but I'll tell you more about that later in regards to uh, a, a business deal that I had with someone, an arrangement. Um, and then when I jumped out on my own, it became, it's a problem, you know, a conflict of interest. And so yet they basically told me, a blank, made a blanketed threat that, hey, look, if you do this, you won't get this because I'm the man in this area. Well, you know, I've been through a whole lot. So I ain't easily scared. Uh, so we'll talk about that later. But anyway, so thanks for tuning in. And I am going to, for all those technicians out there or people who are interested in it, getting into the field, again, always remain professional, right? Even when it don't make sense and even when they're unreasonable, it doesn't matter, right? Do the job, do it right so you don't get callbacks. We hate going back. So we do it right the first time. And, you know, always make the experience pleasant collect your money and leave okay so if you remember that you'll be okay you'll still have you'll run into complicated people but that's okay you know it's all right i'm here to do a job i'm being professional and then you get it done so all right stay tuned